So now I have the two sides glued to the foot. And I'm just waiting for it to dry. I had to cut one of the sides shorter because this actually ends up being kind of like a shelf that the Clavinova sits on. So I'm done sanding and it's time to go ahead and put some paint on it. I'd say it turned out pretty well. I would do some things differently instead of using the drill press to put the large holes in the feet for the wheels. I think I should have made a template for the router and that would have been a lot easier and end up looking a lot cleaner. So this whole area right here, that is actually a spot where I'm going to be able to put some music so that I'll always have my materials ready since I don't really have a desk in front of the room. Should be kind of nice. I took the leg off of the Clavinova. So this is the manufacturer's leg. And I need to duplicate at the very top. There's this rabbit that the piano sits on top of. It doesn't go all the way to the end. So we see the wood on the end looks nice. But I've got to duplicate that and transfer all those measurements over to my new leg. So right here and over, I need to cut out so the Clavinova will fit. Now on the commercial version, I've got a bracket here that the speaker sits on underneath the piano. So instead of having that little bracket on my leg, I've got this giant shelf that sits here. So uh, hopefully all of this will line up. To make this cut, I'm going to use my router table. I have put tape all across the fence and on the upper fence here so that I won't mar the paint that I've already put on the rest of the leg. I'm using a double decker featherboard right here to help me hold the leg in place. Now I already made a test cut right there. So you can see how that's going to work. And I'm gonna gradually bring the fence towards the bit until I've reached the depth of three quarters of an inch. I had to be very careful not to let the leg wobble as that would affect the cut. And it was very slow going. Fortunately, it produced a really nice cut. So here I'm just raising the bit up just a little bit to get it up to its final height before I make my larger cuts. One thing I forgot to do after I moved the fence forward is to release the pressure on the feather boards. It ended up being very tight, and here you can see I'm struggling to move it. And then I realized what my problem was. So eventually I decided it was almost as easy just not to use the feather board at all. With that super tall fence, I'm able to get a nice straight 90 degree cut pretty safely and accurately. On the other leg, I had to start in the middle of the board. So that's why I had that little notch out there so I could safely put it over the router bit and then continue to the end. I'm supposed to be about one and an eighth from the edge, which is right there. So I'm a little bit shy of that. So I think I'll just clean that up with a chisel. The original leg ends right here but my leg is a little bit wider. So I'm gonna have to make another little cutout here about a quarter of an inch deeper, which is gonna go around some plastic, which is on the bottom of the piano. I'm also gonna have to, at that same point, go down about a quarter of an inch as well. So now you can see 
This is where the original leg would have ended. And then I put these extra little cutouts to go around some other hardware on the bottom. It doesn't need to look pretty because nobody will ever be able to see that. I took home the center brace that went between the legs on the Clavinova. It also um, holds down the pedals as well. But what I'm using it for is to find the exact distance between where the legs should be. So this would be the length of the Clavinova, at least on the underside. So I'm going to use that, and now I'm going to be measuring from my new wider legs the inside measurements of both sides, and I'm going to cut this board down to that measurement because it's going to go right down here. That exact same measurement is also going to be used for the other stretcher, which goes lower down on the legs. I have the stretcher here, and I marked the exact middle of the existing board. Remember, inside the stretcher, I have some wood, right about that long, and then again, towards both ends. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring from the middle each direction, so that I'm guaranteed to still have that wood in the middle of the stretcher. So I'm going to cut off this end first, right where I have it marked. And then from there, I'm going to measure 44 and 3 eighths inches for the final length of the stretcher. So now you can see how it left a nice clean cut and it still has a piece of wood in the middle, which will allow screws to have an extra hold. I've done the exact same thing for the stretcher which holds the pedal legs. So I found the middle right between where these manufacturer's screws are, and then I measured out 22 and 3 sixteenths, and then I'm gonna cut the other end to 44 and 3 eighths. Should make both stretchers the same. This is the underside of the pedal mechanism, and I've taken off the leg supports of this, and I've unscrewed this because what I need to do is I need to drive some screws through this plastic to go into that center stretcher. Now the problem is, is that this is really thin plastic, so I'm gonna have to add some little blocks so that uh, it just doesn't go right through it. I've cut little quarter inch pieces of plywood to fit right in here. I added glue and then I drilled through, I have a board underneath so the plastic wouldn't break, and then I've just put some screws just a little bit in so that uh, they'll line up with the holes, because now I have to screw this from below in order to get it set exactly right. So I have the screws kind of sticking up, probably a little farther than I would like, but I've reattached these leg supports and what I'm going to do is I have a line drawn here, it's kind of hard to see, and a line, center line drawn right there. And I'm going to push this up against those two legs and hopefully line this all up exactly. Now I'm going to drill up from below. Okay, so they're in position, but they're not really all the way in. So now I will put them on a flat surface where I can press down and do a better job. There's not much holding it on right now. There we go. So I'll just let this overhang the saw a little bit. Now I can screw straight down. I have to do a little bit at a time so I'm not warping the plastic too much. 
until that gap fills in. Getting pretty close now. I think it's all the way down now. Awesome. I don't think that's going to go anywhere now. I've sanded everything down. In particular, I've sanded down the old parts, which have this uh, very smooth, plasticky surface. So I would needed to make sure I rough that up so when I put the new paint on it, it will adhere to it. Here is the bottom unit, fully put together and freshly painted. I'm going to take it this way to school and hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to assemble all of this. I'm very pleased with the paint job. So back at school I took off all the manufactured parts and I installed these new legs. So the easiest way to do this was upside down. With the installation complete I just had one of my fellow teachers help me turn it upright. Everything went perfectly together. This, of course, is the front that the students would see. You can just barely make out where the wheels are touching the carpet. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe.